Hi, I'm Richard Bainey, and I'm standing at a place of significance in the history of Indiana from a time gone by. In 1861, this is the original spot of the Indianapolis Union train station. Trains from east and west converged right here. On February 11th, 1861, a most honored guest arrived here in Indianapolis, President-elect Abraham Lincoln, who was on his way to Washington, D.C. for his first inauguration. He spent his 52nd birthday here along with his family. He addressed a crowd of 20,000 people here at the train station with a short speech. He talked about the problems the nation was facing and the impending threat of southern states succeeding from the Union. But Lincoln made a very important point to Hoosiers who were there that day when he said in his speech, I appeal to you to constantly bear in mind that not with politicians, not with presidents, not with office seekers, but with you is the question. Shall the union and shall the liberties of this country be preserved to the latest generations? Lincoln had a remarkable way of summing up the obligations of a free people in a few words. He reminded his audience that liberty must be preserved by the people, not their elected officials. In the crowd listening to his speech was Governor Oliver Morton. Morton was a friend of Abe Lincoln, and he was also extremely insightful. He could see that civil war was imminent. On the heels of Lincoln's visit, Governor Morton called on the people of Indiana to form a volunteer militia to help preserve their country. Shortly after war broke out, Lincoln asked for 7,500 volunteers from Indiana. In three days, 22,000 came forward, so many that some had to be turned away. In the four years of that great struggle, 210,487 Hoosiers stepped forward and volunteered, 15% of the population of our state at that time. They understood that if freedom and liberty were to be preserved, they would have to stand up, step out, and take up arms for a just cause. It's been a long time since Lincoln gave his speech here in our great capital city. And what's happened to our country since then? Well, sadly, and in many ways, we find the spirit of Hoosier stepping up to preserve freedom has been trampled on by a very large federal government that has overstepped its constitutional boundaries. You see, the Constitution is very clear and sets very strict limits on our elected officials. Yet, in this past year, we have seen a government that has been bent on intruding into our lives, telling us what kind of cars to drive, who will be running our private businesses, what kind and how much health care we will have, how we will produce energy, and on and on. Yet, ironically, this very encroachment into the lives of private citizens is the very thing that led the patriots at the founding of our nation to revolt against Great Britain in the first place. Yet here we are today under very similar circumstances. I've come to a place where I feel compelled to stand up and say, enough. Like Lincoln, I believe that the federal government is constitutionally bound to preserve our freedoms, not take them away. Yet here we are with elected officials who believe and act as if they are our boss and not the other way around. Here's what I believe. The Constitution of the United States has been ignored by politicians who are more concerned with hanging on to power than serving the people. I am not a career politician. I'm an average Hoosier who is taking a stand. It's time to say enough to career politicians and send people to Washington who know who the boss is, the citizens of our great nation. Here is what I want to do first. I want to repeal much of the intrusive laws that have stymied our economy and threatened our freedoms. There is something about being an American that says, yes, I can. We don't need the federal government coming into Indiana to bail us out. Hoosiers can take care of their own problems when the federal government gets out of the way. Secondly, I intend to inject some common sense into our federal government. The Obama administration is talking about a $9 trillion debt. Let me illustrate how much money that is. If you took $710 million a year from each man, woman, and child in our state, from the birth of Christ until now, you would have $9 trillion. Are you kidding me? 
We must stop spending our future away. There's an old adage, the slave and the debtor are the same. We must stop the spending spree in Washington, D.C. I intend to stop the spending spree to give the United States economy a fighting chance of getting back on its feet. Thirdly, I will vote to secure our borders and to provide a strong military. This is the responsibility of our government as spelled out by our Constitution. I will be a friend of our men and women in uniform. We must never forget that we have enemies who would like nothing more than to see innocent Americans killed. I will not forget our nation's security. I'm asking you to stand and join me in this fight. I'm Richard Bainey, Republican candidate to serve you in the United States Senate, and I approve this message.